five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Roll subtitle. Live from Harlem in New York. The Ramble with Alex Bennett. That's me, and we'll be here until, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the fabulous Larry Bubbles Brown. Go, Larry. Hello, Alex. <laughs> See, hey, you sound more excited than usual today. Yes, I'm, I'm very peppy because you told me you're a little tired, so I'm going to try to carry the energy. You're going to try and carry the energy. Yeah. I just, I got a whole bunch of information on my uh, my prostate thing, uh, the, the seed implantation. You know, they're yes. putting these radioactive seeds in me. Uh, now, this is, the, this is the standard these days for that treatment, right? It, it's one of the standards. You know, I mean, the the, the uh, radiation I had was is a standard, and this is a standard, and the both together are usually done to make sure they get everything. Okay, but uh, so I get all this information. Here, here, here's the uh, here's a here's here's one of the, uh, one of the things I absolutely love is the. Um, uh, after the implant, most patients do not experience discomfort immediately after the implant. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's good news, isn't it? Right. Yeah. However, you may experience any of the following. Pain or burning with urination, bruising in the perineum, frequent urination, frequent urges to urinate, setting up, uh, getting up frequently at night, slow stream or hard urination, inability to urinate, high fevers greater than 101 degrees. Wow. And then they have a whole thing about how to solve these problems. When you get to the high fever, they say, well, the uh, 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 urologist probably prescribed an antibiotic after the implant. These should be taken uh, the full length of the prescription. If you experience a high fever greater than 101 degrees, call your urologist. Suppose it's at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know? Yeah, they'll be there. <laughs> but here, here, here's the one I, I love. Um, this is the radiation safety rules to follow, which, of course, I, I want those safety rules because, after all, I don't want to do anything that would hurt anybody. Please do not place pregnant women or small child on your lap for two months following the implant. <laughs> Um, this is your chance to get even. <laughs> <laughs> well, if 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 like I got somebody pregnant, this is a good way to get the kid aborted. <laughs> Either that, or you get a kid with three eyes, something like that. You know, <laughs> you like that one, huh? That's funny. You're gonna love this one. Wear a condom dirt following the implant, as directed by the radiotherapist. This will protect your partner if a seed is passed. During relations. Past? Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, for instance, uh, you know, I seriously doubt that after having these seeds implanted, I'm even going to want to fuck for two months. No. O okay? <laughs> but uh, if a seed is passed, I guess, uh, you know, so we don't want any seeds passing. Now, any loose seeds that are found... <laughs> Where are they going to be found? I pee them out in the toilet, right? Mm -hmm. uh, should be placed in a medicine bottle and placed in the medicine cabinet. Call the radiation oncologist for instructions. I can imagine that if I get one of these seeds and I pass it and then I put it in a little jar and whatever, and I, I call my uh, radiologist, my urologist for uh, uh, for this whole thing, the next thing that comes up uh, are, are like three guys in hazmat suits. Hazmat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kicking the door in. <laughs> Kicking the door in <laughs> to drag me this stuff out. Come on, you know. Uh, and I'm told by the doctor, oh, this is a very simple procedure, right? It's in and out. You're in and out of the hospital. That's great. I'm in and out of the hospital. 
just afterwards, you know, I can't pee. I get high in 101 degree temperatures. Uh, she hasn't prescribed any any antibiotics for me to take, so uh, I have no idea. And they said I've taken an antibiotic the night before, and um, uh, I, she I, I, she's out for a couple of days. I wrote her and I said I don't have an antibiotic prescription. Uh, the last time I asked her about this, she said, "Well, no, they feed you antibiotics through the intravenous while you're under." So uh, who knows? I give up. You know, I'll probably die on the table anyway. So. <laughs> How did he go? Well, he was having some seeds implanted in his prostate, and you know, the catheter fell out of his dick, and they blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> Well, I like how they, uh, you know, the same with the, when you get a thyroid procedure and they put this radiation in you. Sometimes after the surgery, they put you, they'll seal you up in a room for a um, week and they give you these uh, pills that uh, you're not supposed to urinate in public uh, restrooms or anything. I'm thinking, so if it's, <laughs> if it's that dangerous to the public, how can this shit be good that they're putting in you? It, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, oh, it's nice. You're putting all the about a hundred seeds in my prostate. That's wonderful. You know, it says then come back a month later so we can do a CT scan and check uh, uh, if the seeds are radiating properly and uh, if it's affecting any nearby organs. Yeah. How many? How many did they put in? I don't know. I read somewhere it's a couple of hundred, but I I don't Jeez, think I don't really? I don't wow. think I don't think it's that many. They're all about the size of a, a grain of rice. Um, you know, which is fine, but a hundred of those can be, you know, well, who knows? I don't know. So I, 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 I'm giving up on this whole process. I just do it and let me be in pain, and I'll just lie in bed for weeks, and I won't do shows, and I'll be just horrible. You know, I'm probably over <laughs> overthinking it. And then I'm I well, keep I keep worrying my hernia is going to get bad before the uh, seeds are implanted. So, yeah. well, wait, what did he? Uh, did, if you took the course of doing nothing, did you discuss that with him? No, I really didn't. You know, I mean, I have always wanted to ask him. What if I didn't do any of this? What were, what would what would have been the prospects? You know. And he'd probably mm -hmm. say, well, you could get, it could spread to other organs and blah, 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 or it might not. Oh, okay. Now do I want to take a chance on they might not? And I don't think I want to take a chance on that, you know. Um, what's the downside of the radiation? Discomfort. It's, you know, it's my, my original urologist who sent me to the oncologist, um, uh, said to me that uh, the whole process is you have prostate cancer. Okay, I said, okay. He said, I said, it's going to kill me? He said, no, but it's going to be mildly annoying. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it's been so far, is yeah. mildly annoying. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I guess I can live with mildly annoying. It just makes me grouchier. You know. <laughs> <laughs> than I already am. So how's your hernia? Because my, I, I, I keep thinking... It was, uh, it, you know, it goes through periods where it hurts for pretty bad, and then it, yeah. it's good for a week. So Mine doesn't hurt, and when I push on it, nothing hurts. You know, when yours hurts, when you push on it, does it hurt? It doesn't hurt when I push on it. Sometimes it just hurts when I'm standing up or... Yeah, well, no, I just feel like in my groin... Uh, it's it's it, it, it's a little rough. It doesn't even hurt. It just kind of is. Uh, I don't know. I it may not even be the he the hernia that's causing that. I may actually have crotch rot or something. <laughs> well, I would like to get it repaired, but I just you know I don't. Know. Well, I don't have great pain, you know. But you do have great pain, right? And not great, but it's pretty, uh, it comes and goes. Yeah. I used to have it when I was walking, and then it stopped. So I guess maybe it popped through or something. Yeah. If you're not having pain, they would say, uh, just leave it alone. Yeah, I'm not having pain. I'm just having a little, I don't know. I'm sitting here, and I'm imagining it right now. But it doesn't hurt when I push on it. When I lie down, it recedes back into the... You know. Yeah, that's what mine does. So that's yeah. Yes, yeah, so they told you yours is not 
If yeah. it doesn't recede, that can be a problem. But uh, yeah, yeah. you're not having pain and it recedes, I'd leave it alone. Yeah. That, um, um, I'm just worrying about that because I know I have this coming up, and I don't want that to interrupt this. You know. So, so anyway, we've talked. We've been on now for. Ten minutes almost, and we and people hate us talking about our health issues. Is talking about our health. Well, we could talk about Donald Trump. How's that? Or we could talk that about the debate. Health issue. We could talk about the debate on the team. Wow! I just did. You see any of that debate? Did you pay attention to these things? I didn't, but I heard it was pretty bad. Oh, he, the winner of that debate was Donald Trump. I mean, they made the. That's what I think he could win again. The Democrats made it themselves look so bad last night by trying to go after Bloomberg like they did. You know, they could have questioned Bloomberg and stuff like that, but they were like piling on, you know. And um, I don't. I, it's interesting. Bloomberg didn't seem ready for it, which is amazing to me because usually he's a good enough politician that he would be. You know, ready for it as it were. You would think. Yeah. So anyway, it 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 uh, it was a uh, it was a cluster. You know what? Well, who went after him the hardest, Sanders or uh, Warren? I think Sanders did. You know, and uh, I don't like Sanders. I just don't. Uh, there's just something that's not genuine about him, uh, and uh, you know, he doesn't ring true to me. I think it was best stated about by, by Bloomberg when he says, I don't know what kind of world you live in, but you're a socialist and you own three homes and you're worth several million dollars. In, how, does it, how do we come to that? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. a good point. <laughs> you know, and, and I kind of agree with that. You know, I mean, it's not like he exactly lives the lifestyle. That's true. You know, that he that he should to be a... A, a, a decent human being. Well, anyway, that's that was the whole thing last night. And I, I am watching it today, watching the reruns of it. It was just everybody bickering with everybody else. And the trouble is that when you get these 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 um, debates, what you're doing is you're supplying uh, sound bites for the Republicans. So what you should do is everything you can to not fight with each other or to uh, denigrate each other and each other's record, but try and just bolster your own cause and lay down your credentials. You get what I'm saying? And if, yeah. I, if I were these Democrats, I wouldn't even debate. Uh, I wouldn't give the Republicans that ammunition and you know you know they're going to take you know sound bites from this debate and say do you want somebody who listened to this you know and then they go oh you know you did such and such and it, it, it's it's just giving every debate they've done like i don't know i think three thousand debates so far and they've given them just constant ammunition for the opposition ads it's it, it I, I just think it's really stupid. And if I were if I were the Democrats, I would have said, you know, maybe one, two debates at best, and that's it. And we all act very civil towards each other. We give make our case, but we don't try to denigrate everyone else's case. Right. And and that way you'd be safe, okay? Uh, but this way, I mean, come on. If I were a a Republican ad maker, guy making ads for the Republicans. I would just be clipping up sound bites like crazy on each of these guys because whoever the nominee is, you're going to have enough information from what the other people said to go get them. And and I I just think it's it's it, you people have really uh, screwed up, okay? Just screwed up. And so I think Trump won last night. I think he really yeah, you got that infighting. That's like uh, remember when uh, Ted Kennedy challenged uh, Jimmy Carter, and that uh, and he got mopped up by Reagan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You you don't, you don't give them something they can feed off of. And they they feed off this kind of stuff. So uh, anyway, you know, and uh, uh, this is, is just uh, terrible, just terrible. 
And and uh, today, you know, you go over to MSNBC or someplace like that, and they're deconstructing the whole thing. And who won last night? It's, it's like there was, it was a boxing match, you know. <laughs> and and they're they're doing the after boxing match analysis. And if so and so had given a harder punch here, blah 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 blah. And some of them were even describing it as a wrestling match today. And um, it, that's what it's become. But that's what they wanted. That's what MSNBC wanted last night in order to get ratings, in order to sell ads, you know. So um, anyway, eh, screw it. So how was the life of Larry Bubbles Brown? Oh, just wonderful. I'm, <laughs> my album's coming out in two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I want to give you the first copy. Uh, okay, it's it's going to be uh, you're going to have a record release party. I think they're trying to do one. Yeah. Oh really? <laughs> oh, okay. I, I hate self promotion, so I can't deal with this stuff. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. So uh, uh, now uh, you're also doing a comedy show. I read, I saw this in the uh, in the uh, online at the punchline called the Dinosaurs of Comedy. Yeah, we do a couple, three of those every year. It's well, I know it's nice to show up for, and I'm sure they pay you a bundle of money to do it. Yeah, so I think we're getting paid what we got paid 30 years ago. <laughs> Something like that. Well, that's, that's because it's, 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 a, it's a mood piece, and they want to keep you in the mood by paying you what they paid you 30 years ago. Take us back to 1990. But I, I asked this of Pearl, because I said, are you doing it? And he said, no, I'm not living in the Bay Area anymore, so I never get asked to do it. And I said, uh, but how do you feel about the term dinosaur of comedy? I mean, has it come to that? Uh, well, they actually, actually, they were... We've been discussing that because a couple of uh, think think it's a really bad title because <laughs> dinosaurs are extinct. Yeah, but I think dinosaurs are kind of lovable. I kind of like it, so I don't know. Maybe they should have come up with a different name. But uh, uh, in uh, fact, they're trying to come up with a different name. So it, you know, uh, something like uh, oh, I don't know, um, comedies of uh, well, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, if anybody be... can come up with a good name, let us know, because they want to change Well, it. there's a good term. I mean, what's the term they use for, like, uh, uh, old stuff that's good now? You know, uh, uh, classic comics or something like that, you know. Uh, but it, 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 it's just, you know, I mean, it's it's a fairly good lineup, you know. Uh, I yeah. think you're the best one on the on the on oh. in the group. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Uh, um Michael Meehan's on it, I think. Yeah, Johnny Steele, and I think Diane Amos is. Diane Amos. She, she's, I didn't know she, she was, was on. Okay. It. Someone told me, oh, she's on it. So. She was okay, um, but well, uh, she had a, she's had a great career as a pine saw lady. As a what? As what? She's a, uh, the pine saw lady. She's a spokesman. For, I think she's been doing that for thirty years. Really? But, I, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, then she she certainly doesn't need the money. No, I see. If you can get into a like flow from progressive, you get one of those jobs. You're the spokesman. It's just you shoot two or three of those a year, and you make a fortune. And... Yeah, what could you be the spokesperson for? Yeah, no, <laughs> prostate cancer. Prostate cancer, or, uh, 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 the Neptune Society. Uh, the Neptune Society, <laughs> well, that's, that's the group of the freeze people, isn't it? No, the, cre the cremation. <laughs> oh, the cremation. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, but then again, I, I wonder with these people who, who, like, do these ads for, like, something like uh, hemorrhoids, you know? I used to have the problem, blah, 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 but then I used blah, blah, blah. You know what I saw today? I'll tell you, this is terrible. There's an ad on television for Peroni's disease. Oh. Do you know what Peroni's disease I've, is? I've seen that, yeah. It's a penis Curvature. that curves, okay? Um, and uh, it it's curved in that permanent position. Sometimes it has a bump on it. It's kind of the Rumpelstiltskin of penises, you know? <laughs> uh, and they do the ad, and they're showing squash... Bananas, <laughs> things like <laughs> that. Have, have you seen the ad? 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I used to have a problem, but I went to my doctor, and now you know. And then they, I guess they show like a, you know a hot dog. I, I you know it it's just. And then they they don't they don't say what it is anymore. I think they said Peroni's disease once in the ad, but then after that they call it PD. P. I have PD. And ED. <laughs> yeah, but I, I have PD. Oh well, very good. You got PD. That's wonderful. Um, uh, what do you have? Police department? Is that what you have? You know. Um, Post depression. I mean, it's just they never in a lot of these diseases like uh, uh, erectile dysfunction. Never use the term erectile dysfunction. I had ED. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You mean your dick wouldn't get hard? Is that what you're telling me? No, I have ED. That's nicer than erectile dysfunction. <laughs> I mean. Come on. And then showing all these these things like squash and, you know, cucumbers and whatever uh, to describe the disease is just, I'm sitting there going, has it really come to this? Is this what advertising on television is? Well, it's another reason that used to be they couldn't advertise pharmaceuticals, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think we should go back to that era. Well, um, uh, uh, you, you know what's the worst thing they say about the advertising for pharmaceuticals uh, is that people then go to their doctor and say what they want. You know, I did that a couple of months ago. I wanted Lyrica because of my uh, my uh, neuropathy. And the doctor said, oh, okay, sure, Here, here's a script for Lyrica or the generic Lyrica or whatever it is. And I'm going, uh, I even did it, you know, and that's why they advertise. Is yeah, because so it works. And doctors hate that because you go to your doctor and you go, well, I saw on TV, blah, 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 they have this thing that will treat my condition. Can you give me a prescription for it? And doctors will give you a prescription for it because doctors don't want to be put in the position of refusing you the medicine you want. Uh, and that's why they advertise. When they couldn't advertise, your doctor gave you what you needed. And you didn't know what was out there anyway, so you took what he gave you. It's it's uh, it's a whole new world, you know. And, uh, I mean, I there was a time, you know, I've been talking about the fact that I hate the primaries because they serve no function except to help the various political parties determine who their nominee is going to be. And since each state pays a fortune for those primaries to take place, shouldn't the parties be paying for it? Right. That's a good idea. First of all. Secondly, up until I think it was the 40s, maybe even the 50s, there weren't primaries. Some states had primaries. Some didn't. And uh, what happened was everybody went to a big convention and they all caucused with each other and you know, fought with each other and canoodled each other and uh, came up with a nominee. Uh, But it had nothing to do with what went on at any primaries. So let's go back to that. Just have your convention in in, uh, September or or August and and let me know who your your standard bearer is. And then they can go out and they can run across the country trying to sell their wares for about two months, three months, and then we have an election It's all over with. This thing started a year ago, over a year oh, ago, a year and a half it starts, ago. It starts almost six months after a new president's yeah. sworn in. Yeah, they, got, they should cut the time down on this. And, and the, the, only, uh, you know, the only people who love it are these news organizations who then have a year and a half or two years of material to, to, to promote. Uh, and it, it does nothing, and it costs us, the taxpayer in our states, a lot of different money. Now, let me see here. We just lost Larry for some reason. I don't know why, so let me just call him back. Uh, he just it just dis, just disconnected. There you are. We're back. Okay. I, don't, I don't know what happened to you. You have like a regular landline, right? I got a landline, yes. Yeah, he's got a landline. And he gets disconnected. So anyway, that was my whole thing about the... Uh, um, 
I think I only lost you for a couple of seconds. Well, I, I guess TV loves it because these guys spend so much in commercials and yeah. it makes them a fortune. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it really, it, it doesn't serve any real purpose, you know. Um, I mean, uh, so I don't know what's going to happen here in New York. Who, uh, who's going to be win? Uh, probably Bernie Sanders will get the nomination, you know, will get win the primary. Maybe Bloomberg would, but I don't know if Bloomberg would win in New York. That's that's a good really? question. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people who like him, a lot of people who don't like him. He wasn't a bad mayor. He wasn't a bad mayor. He wasn't a great mayor. He, you know, in fact, in my lifetime, I don't know if I've had any great mayors here in New York. Maybe Lindsay was okay. Yeah, but anyway. So, listen, we've talked ourselves out here. We've talked ourselves blue. We talked ourselves <laughs> blue. <laughs> And uh, we'll talk to you very, very soon. I don't know when I'll see yeah, you next will, because my of, my, of my operation and my procedures and so on. But we'll, we'll see you uh, as quickly as is humanly possible. The lovely and attractive Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Bubs. Thanks, Alex. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen, Larry, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you very much, Larry Bubbles Brown. Why do they call him Bubbles? Um, the Paula Poundstone uh, came up with the name Bubbles because she felt he was so effervescent <laughs> that that should be his nickname. So that's what happened. Let me see here. Where are we? Where do we find? Oh, there's, there's Skype. I forget where I put Skype in my tray there we go and now we're opening up our skype lines for the uh hear that that means that it's working it meant that uh, it said oh you know the last guy was the call this person right okay anyway so it's time now for people to call this program and we put together what's called a citizen panel which is not one not two not three not four not five not six not seven not eight not nine we can go upwards to i don't know I've tried, we've tried 12. I think for the sake of the program, the best is maybe eight, okay? You know, after that, it gets a little unwieldy, and uh, that's a real problem. Boy, these lights that I got really are working nicely, aren't they? Oh, God, he shouldn't have had that up all the way. Here comes Charlie Wallace, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he, uh, he of the, uh, hey. uh, he who, and he was, he was in the first place last night. And now he's in the first place tonight. You see him up there? Up there? Right up there. He's right up in that corner here. Wait a minute. Let me see if Yay. I can. Can I get up there? Uh, I can't poke him. Oh, well. <laughs> Hello there, Charlie. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. Uh, here comes. Uh, oh, here comes oh, Bree. Here comes Bree. Oh, already. Bree oh. is calling. Uh, let me see here. Let me put him in the number two spot. Uh, Bree Free. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Okay, there he is now. Let's see here. Uh, Bree is. I'm gonna cancel. See if if if, if yeah. If you, oh, he's uh, there. We go. Okay. Now let me uh, let me uh, get him. See if you don't turn on your camera, I then don't get a thing of you here. But once you do, I have a thing for you here. And then Phil Meyer is calling. Um, yes, ladies and gentlemen. So he will, as soon as he comes in, uh, let me see here. Do we have a picture of him? Fine. Uh, we put him in the uh, bottom spot here. We'll, he'll be on the bottom tonight. Well, there we go, I think. And there we go. Okay. All right. So uh, did you go beat up on the old guys last night, Phil, at their photo club? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm the print chair, so I'm in charge of uh, setting the prints out and organizing them uh, for the uh, for the judges. So uh, it's necessary that I be there because no one else is spry enough. And Every, uh, everywhere else, we call those gophers. Yeah, well, <laughs> no one else can lift the viewer uh, besides me. <laughs> They're all too old. Well, really? Yeah. 
Yeah, the viewer weighs about 40 pounds. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Soon you won't be able to lift that, so then someone else will have to do it. Some other bully who comes with his photographs to, you know, take his 40 years of photography and take the best three pictures and win contests. Yeah, yeah well, uh, you know, I, I, I do current stuff. And, yeah. You know, I like to do things from the current year. From the current year? Yeah. Yeah. Hello and, to Bree. Uh, Bree is uh, where are you, Bree? You're in uh, you're in fuzzy background land. I'm in KL. KL. Okay. Huh? Okay. Uh, I'm in KL. You're in KL, Kuala Lumpur, and he's fuzzed out well, his background. You know, I can do the same yeah. thing if I want to here, but I don't because I want everybody to see the clutter that I have in back of me. <laughs> We're talking about about Skype folks, people who are watching me on the show. I can't blur out my background, which would be nice if I could blur out my background. Uh, it'd be nice if I could blur out my foreground. Then people wouldn't have to see how ugly I am. Let me see. I wish here. we could put faces on. You know, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, so I want everybody to see my cowboy face. Oh, you're what? <laughs> you're what? A cowboy nation. Oh, oh yeah, right, right. Let me see here. Uh, beep, 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 beep. Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, Jeff is like this weird, really weird uh, uh, no, thing. It's claiming Pam Zeller. Huh? You know. Uh, well, no, it, it signs on as Pamela Zeller, but then the, his number, his actual number that I get here, is. Uh, let me see here. Can I? Uh, can I read it to you? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, let me see here. It's uh, I have to put my glasses on. It's uh, C B E eight nine four eight O A eight B three E six D three. You know, you can just change that to Stein Zeller. <laughs> I think I should. <laughs> All you have to do is go go into your thing, and it says what your name is going to be, and don't do it now. Don't do anything now. But, <laughs> you know. but every time I'm looking for you, I'm going, wait a minute, where is he? And then I go, oh, yeah, he's that, that, that long, involved one, you know. Well, Ray had the same thing. Hmm? Ray had a similar thing the other night. No, he has Goomba 21 again. So, oh, again, okay. Yeah, he has that again. So, so yeah. why, do you, why do you think they suspended you, Jeff? I don't know. I have no idea what happened. They suspended you from Skype? Yeah. What All mean? of a sudden, it wouldn't work. Okay. And then I tried to reload it. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't run. And the more and more we asked them, it said, sorry, you've had problems with it too many times. And you're <laughs> out. Wow. And so Pam finally got, got it in. But it's under her name. And I figured, okay, I'll take it. Well, that. by the way, you know, you can always call them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We tried By that. the way, that, that's a joke, folks, because there's no way you can call Skype. There's no, no way you can talk to a human being about your problems with Skype. Well, you could talk to me about it. Yeah. But I move your camera you so we... Move but nobody your, had Skype. Move your talk. camera so we see your whole face, okay? We're just seeing the bottom part. There we go. Yeah. That's... Yeah, that's... Oh, yeah, that's... Like, I think the business... I like that uh, thing. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, this uh, Forbin Colossus is a major asshole. Why don't you block him? Uh, I, because I just he's, know he's an old fan <laughs> and he's nice to me. Yeah, but he's not nice to Bree. Uh, is Bree a silly serial killer? Or a registered regular kind of lurking dude. Who does he date? I don't see that. Where do you see oh, it? It's uh, on the um, YouTube. Yeah. Chat. On the chat line. Uh, yeah. Well, but I have a defender. Who does he date? I have a defender. Actually, I date him I have a defender, by about 40 I? years. What? Yeah. Who's that? There's somebody who, who defends me, right, Alex? Uh, Jeff usually has the best backgrounds, says uh, yeah, Corbin oh, Colossus. Yeah. That blue wall in his kitchen is snazzy. That's a kitchen down in, down in Miami. You won't see that in another couple of weeks. American yeah. Patriot, who is a truly an asshole, 
<laughs> says Forbin is Forbin is just plain <laughs> cruel. He mocks Tony too, and Forbin now they're writing back and forth. So I'll read them. Right. Forbin Colossus right. says, "Phil, you monster! I'm what kind of wood flooring?" On YouTube, please what? defend my positions, Your whatever. Honor. You know, yeah. <laughs> Phil, you monster! <laughs> what kind of wood flooring is non-toxic? Um, kind I shove up his ass. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> oh boy. Well, there, there goes. I'll the defend. There goes there my monetization for tonight. Ah, oh, boy. Well, uh, hey, I, shoving up the ass is not the same as a curse word. I, I, I who knows? I mean, it, 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 we have no idea how this thing works. You know. So. Oh, uh, it, it does say. And welcome I'm going to for lunch at, at noon. So what? Uh, yeah. I'm going to be going for lunch at noon. Yeah. And that's when. So so I've got 20 minutes, and then I'll uh, rejoin you when I'm at the restaurant. At the restaurant. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Let me are you going to get the same stuff, or are you going to get something new this time? Uh, I, I'm not, I think I may get Japanese, but I'm going to a different place today. Mm. Uh, is there What's pretty it? girls in this different place? <laughs> what? We that's want what the pretty girls place. Uh, you guys, <laughs> stop. <laughs> We don't care what kind of food you eat. Just, you know, get the pretty girls. Yeah. That was awesome last week. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have some pretty good-looking uh, ladies there. What I, I wish I, they I, made I, is uh, I, I, I wish have, that they had a little camera that could I Bluetooth have, to the phone. I have to be careful. what put the camera yeah. somewhere else, yeah. you know, so I'm not yeah. holding my phone. So I, have to be so I have to be careful what I say in case I decide to ever run for president, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, well, you may have pulled an, an off-color joke and had to sign an NDA. Well, you know, uh, I, I, the thing is, if you do something like, um, if I did something in the year 2000, I think I might say something in 2000 I wouldn't have said in 2016, yeah. okay? You know, uh, all of us might have. You know? I'm sure we have. You see a woman walking down the street, I, you go, well, I'd, I'd, I'd do her, you know? Yeah. You know, we did, we did that all the time. That was guys talking to guys. But now, if you said that, they go, hey, listen to the way. Let's. I'm going to sign a non-disclosure agreement just before you hand over the five million dollar check. You know, so yeah, yeah. People sign non-disclosure agreements because they've been given a hell of a lot of money, and the person who gives them a hell of a lot of money doesn't want the disclosure of how much money was paid to them. Yeah. Uh, why it was paid to them. Sometimes it's just to get them off of them as a nuisance. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of times if, if a guy uh, gets sued, somebody in a big company or a big company gets sued by somebody for a million dollars, uh, they'll settle rather than have to go through the expense of defending themselves. You know, they've got the oh. FU money and uh, uh, they can do it. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they were wrong. They just it just means that they decided they would give them the money rather than fight it. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah. Hey, a uh, bit of good news. I um, uh, I called Verizon and I said, "Look, uh, my iPhone 10. The battery says that it needs service." Uh, I said, "I have a warranty." And they said, "Yes, you do." So they sent me a new phone today. Mm -hmm. and I set the old phone next to it, and then all you do is say transfer, and yep. boom, transfers the stuff. It's amazing. You don't have to plug it in. You don't have to do anything. You say transfer? Well, you push the thing. You know, yeah, on the, yeah. On the yeah. tab. Yeah. yeah, it asks you what language, what country, and a couple of other things, a little face recognition, and boom. Now, do you have to it, send the old phone back? Yeah, I have five days to do it. Uh, now, I also have to figure out how to get the SIM card out of the old phone. And, oh, it's, and, it's simple. There's videos on YouTube. Yeah, yeah but I don't have the right tool. I think uh -huh. there's a tool that you use. No, yes, you do. Use your penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not hard enough. Oh, I, I see. Okay, that's the problem. <laughs> it's not, you should have said it's not small enough. <laughs> That it was. <laughs> you know, after a prostatectomy, uh, what they don't tell you is that you lose girth and length. You know? Really? 
Yeah. <clears throat> well, did you yeah. hear me I earlier? Proud. I just got stuff from my from my By doctor. What percentage my, is that uh, calculating? No, no. I got uh, I got stuff from my percentage. <laughs> I got my no. stuff from 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 my doctor about my procedure. Did, did you hear me talking with Bubs about it? Yes, uh, yeah. a, a little bit. I, I was in and out of the I, Bubs. I can't have a a pregnant woman sit on my lap. Oh, because I, of the radiation. Yeah, I'm wondering when that's going to happen in this point at this point in my life. You know, uh, or 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 when you have, any you have any grandchildren, and even if I was <laughs> dating, they probably would all be past pregnancy time. You know, yeah. uh, Mar and, Marjorie's not having a child yet. No, so. and if I have sex, I have to use a condom uh, yeah. in case uh, one of the seeds comes loose. Oh, lovely! And then if one of the seeds comes loose and I find it because I'm digging around in the condom for it. Right, yeah. I should put it in a plastic bottle and call the doctor because it's irradiated. At which point, they send out three guys in hazmat suits to retrieve, you know, this little rice-sized kernel of of, uh, of radioactivity. <coughs> you, know. Well, you know, those are expensive. They can use it on the next guy. They can use them on the next guy. Exactly. Exactly. I wonder. I wonder what happens. I, you know, I, I don't know. I'll, get, I'll find out Tuesday what, what my doctor wears when he's in there. But does, but does he wear a hazmat suit? I mean, how does he prevent himself from getting irradiated? Um, and what's it doing to me? Is what I got that question. Well, it's killing the cancer. It's killing the cancer. Could it be killing me too? Well, there goes your bladder. It just exploded. You know. <laughs> I'm I'm a little I'm a little worried about this whole thing because I just you know I just it, it, I'm going under I could never wake up, you know. I'm worried about that every operation I've had. Yeah, yeah. So you know I I, I don't know. I don't Can know. I have your laser discs? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. They're up and uh, they're up. Uh, go go get a hold of Damien. He knows where they are. You know. Yeah, believe me, it's the last thing I want. In fact, you can have them now if you want them. Uh, <laughs> I don't think they're that. Well, are they that many left? I don't know. They probably the player doesn't have a connection to play into a newer uh, kind of amplifier. Um, or, I'm trying to remember what kind of uh, output that has. I think it has there's some some play some things you can kind of play it on. Put or some. Yeah, yeah, you can. See I, it they they were USBs. Hmm. They were. They came out long before USB. I know. I know. But they demo. did. They did have like a video out, oh. uh, and mm -hmm. and you do have a video in on some things, or you can get a de an adapter that will then turn it into a USB yeah. that will then you know. But I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I guess it would be hard to copy those and put them on uh, on. Uh, your uh, hard drives, right? Uh, put put them on my hard drives. Yeah, uh, I know. I could, CDs. I, but. I, I could. I could do it. Yeah, yeah, I could do it. I mean, I have uh, uh, some equipment that, uh, for instance, I just what I did. I went out. I, you know, I uh, with Midnight Blue. I never saved any of the shows. I never had copies of the shows because they were on three quarter inch, and if you make a copy of three quarter inch. That degrade every time you would make a copy from the original copy, it, it would, would degrade. degrade. Okay, today the you don't know of that, folks, because when you make a copy of a video that you took on your iPhone and then you make another copy of it and another copy of it, they don't degrade because they're all digital. Mm -hmm. But in those days, they degraded. So I never really had copies of of Midnight Blue. Plus, the only thing we had them on was three quarter inch, and I'd have to put them off on the half inch, and then it wouldn't look as good. Alex, so, yeah. didn't uh, John Rockwell say? Uh, is it John Rockwell uh, say that he had a bunch of that? No. no. Could you talk to his? No. Yeah, he. Yeah, well, he said that he had. He had a couple of things, and he had oh. things that I had already. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, this guy bought up all all of midnight blue and all the tapes and everything mm -hmm. uh and i at one point i got a hold of him and i said uh you know uh uh you better not uh I, he started releasing them as midnight blue tapes okay compilations things like that and they didn't look that great but they they were, he did it anyway and uh, i never thought i was on that show much 
I, I thought I had actually worked hard to make sure I wasn't on that show uh, because I had another career. I had a radio career, too. Mm -hmm. And then I suddenly realized when I watched one of these tapes of his how much I was on that show. Your voice and was my, on. Not only my voice, but my me physically was on that show on a rather on most of the stuff he was showing. And I said to him, I said, you know something? <clears throat> I never gave you permission to use my likeness. And he yeah. said, well, we've got the releases everybody signed and things like that. I said, find one for me. I said, I never signed one, ever. Yeah. For, and I had a reason for that. And today is that reason. I said, either you um, uh, make some kind of deal with me or take me off of those tapes. And he said, what do you want? I said, I want the rights to use any of the masters that you have of Midnight Blue. And he said, okay, I'll write you a letter to that effect, okay? Never got the letter. And to this day, yeah. I haven't gotten it. So the other day, I spent 29 bucks and I bought a compilation of all his compilations that he put out. And yeah. I've just transferred them to, uh, to the computer. Yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna start using some of them, you know? Well, I like like an interview only, I did with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm going to start using him. And if he wants to come sue me, I'm sorry, pal. I got a bigger suit. It's for using my likeness without my permission. Well, the only Midnight Blue I ever saw was the one that you uh, copied for me of the Spermathon. And well, that uh, was, Susan was in that. Yeah, yeah, that was the least of my accomplishments <laughs> on that show. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, well, it was... <clears throat> I, I had been watching, what happened was, I had been watching um, uh, I, Claudius, and Messalina, yeah. who was, uh, was it Claudius' wife, I think, on that show, um, had a, uh, a big uh, orgy in which she tried to see how many men she could have sex with in one night. And I thought, that was a terribly good idea. <laughs> so I found a I found a porn actress who was willing to give it a try to see how many guys she could have sex with in one night. And so we then did it and set the world record at I think 79. Later that was passed by by a lot of other porno actresses yeah. as the years went on. Uh and then I videotaped the whole event, right? And people you know, interviewing them. What do you think? What are you doing? You know, she showed a kind of going on because I didn't show hardcore on Midnight Blue, and um, uh, that was our uh, my my big accomplishment in life was the spermathon. Uh, but that wasn't the best. That wasn't the best thing I ever did on Midnight Blue. I looked at a lot of the stuff. He, the terrible thing about these compilations is he did a terrible job of editing them. Um, I'm going to play something. This is going to be, sh for sure, I'm not going to be able to monetize this show after mm. I play this. And everybody be quiet <laughs> while it's playing because it's playing on the same channel. Uh, there was a, 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 a singer, songwriter, by the name of Buzzy Linhart. And I don't know if you know the name, uh, but he, was fairly, he had some accomplishments. I'll tell you what the major accomplishment was after I, well, after I tell the story. Um, so I got a thing from a friend of mine the other day saying, did you hear Buzzy Linhart died? And he was a guy who worked with me on Midnight Blue. And he says, too bad I didn't have that theme song he did for us. Well, I got these discs the other day and sure enough, there was Buzzy singing the song on the, on the, on the thing. And underneath it, it says, Buzzy Linhart was a folk singer songwriter. Yeah. And then it says he was... Good friends with Jimi Hendrix. And I'm thinking to myself, boy, these guys are morons who put this thing together. Because Buzzy Linhart is also famous for something else. He wrote the song You Gotta Have Friends that Bette Midler sings and has used as her theme song for years. And that's a pretty good accomplishment. That song is very well known. So, so, but anyway, he sang this song for us, which was the theme song for Midnight Blue. We used to play it at the front of every Midnight Blue for a long time. And this, for sure, will make sure we're not monetized tonight. Okay? Here's Buzzy. Hey, 
A midnight blue knows nothing's wrong with it. Furry freaks can write a song with it. Dirty is the funniest thing I know. <clears throat> Eat some food and take a shit with it. Sing fuck you and make a hit with it. Dirty is the funniest thing I know. <laughs> the only nasty thing that you could be is a liar. <laughs> Or killing little children because your dick is on fire. <laughs> so suck a cunt and write a tune with it. Find a cock and make a spoon with it. Don't say yes if you can't say fuck no. Ah, because dirty is the funniest thing I know. Yeah, and uh, there was a little more that went on. Uh, everybody, he laughed a lot and everybody applauded. But mm -hmm. that was the theme song for Midnight Blue. And I found that because that was on that, uh, that tape. So I sent it to my friend, uh, David Weinstein, uh, who used to be associate producer on Midnight Blue. And uh, he said he was just sad the other day that when Buzzy died... He, he didn't have a copy of that song. And somehow I coincidentally, within the next couple of days, it had, had my hands on a copy of it, so I sent it to him. Yeah. Jeff had his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, I remember going to that show yeah. in New York only. The only place that I knew it was ever produced. That's the only place it was ever shown, as, you know, uh, uh, on cable, yeah. What was it on, like Sunday night or something? It was on. It, it was actually on Mondays and Fridays, I think, uh, and it was at midnight, and it was blue. Oh. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, we. I think we premiered it. Maybe. Well, wait, I got a sign in back of me. See the, <laughs> yeah, Maybe you don't see it. No, I don't. It's a, that sign you can only see about uh, kind of three quarters of it. See right there. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Up there. It's a Midnight Blue sign, and it says, shown here, Midnight, Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. Okay? I, we premiered it on Tuesday, and then we re-ran re it on Friday and Sunday as well. And, and who was the, the actor? <laughs> I'll call him an actor. Who performed? What do you mean, who performed? Well, when, you, when you saw it on TV... Who was the guy who was there, who was naked every night? Naked every night? No, that wasn't Midnight Blue. That was... Oh, what? No, that was a show called, I think, Interludes After Midnight, which was run by a guy who owned a swingers club, and it was America's only nude talk show. I mean, New York at that time was had a lot of fun stuff on cable. Pretty wild stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. No, Midnight Blue was... Uh, I called it the 60 minutes of sex. It was, you know, it, 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 we literally did documentaries and things like that. And, you know, we, uh, we, we took places into people into places of sexual happenings that they normally <clears throat> wouldn't go. All right. Yeah. Like Plato's retreat, Plato's retreat, well, my, you know, it's always the you know, or I took them to a swingers a convention in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, Catskills, uh, things like that, you know, so, but that 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 was. But anyway, so I, I, as I say, I'm going to use that stuff like crazy. I'm going to one night here. I'm going to run the Arnold Schwarzenegger interview I did with him when he first did Pumping Iron, the documentary about him. Uh, and uh, I love that interview. It's a good interview. Uh, and uh, let me see here. There's a lot of some other stuff. I mean. Um, but but what they did is they chopped it up in such a way that the, there was really good stuff, um, and they just they would start it, and then they would stop it before it really got good. You know, I like I did this thing which uh, I don't know if you know who Annie Sprinkle is. Uh, yeah. But Annie Sprinkle, we did a thing called Annie Sprinkle's Christmas. It was our Christmas show. This is like the first part of the show. Huh? What? I. You, I, nothing, nothing. Please no, go ahead. No, I'm going to go to lunch, so you're gonna, uh, I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Okay, I'll keep your space open, okay? okay. All right. Anyway, um, so uh, we um, we went to, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so it was called Annie Sprinkle's Christmas. And it starts off like the, the uh, uh, Mary Tyler Moore show 
uh, in which she is walking down the street. And she says, oh, I'm so happy to be in New York or something. And he flips her hat in the air. Only it isn't a hat. Like Mary did it, it was her underpants. Okay? <laughs> and then, then, then we do this whole musical montage to a song about New York, which goes on for like two and a half minutes. Now, if, if you were watching the show during the week, it, it was just part of the show. But if you're watching a tape of a compilation of Midnight Blue, you want to get to the meat of stuff, right? But finally, she goes to work, and she's going to work, and she's then some, <laughs> Al Goldstein comes in and yells at her for doing stuff, and, and she was terrific, comedic sense. She was just terrific. And then, then we did this whole thing about her. She, she, she goes home, and she has a dream, and she meets up with an elf, you know, and things like that, and, and the elf, the, blah, 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 and, you know, just the whole thing about Annie Sprinkles' Christmas. That part never got to it, just the part where she's being reamed out by Al Goldstein, and there's this two-and-a-half-minute scene of shots of New York. Boy, are you getting your money's worth with those tapes. I mean, I don't know who, who you know... Um, <laughs> it's like, uh, who was it... Uh, um, uh, the 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 uh, the, uh, the film Eric von Straheim, who had MGM, took his big opus film called Greed, a silent film, maybe the greatest film, one of the greatest films ever made, called Greed, and it was uh, seven hours long when he was finished with it, and MGM kicked him out of the studio, cut it down to two and a half hours, and his line was, uh, the only thing this editor had on his on his he in his head was his hat or something like that. And I felt the same way about this. I mean, why do you do what you did? Why would you run two and a half minutes of shots of New York rather than run the part that really gets good, which is after where they ended it? You know, and it's just all choppy and things are slammed in there without context and, you know. Um, and on this one tape that I saw, I'm, I'm on most of it. You know, and, and the guy's yet to send me a letter saying, hey, you know, we're giving you the rights to it. So I'm thinking of writing him again and just telling him, I warned you, you haven't done anything about it. Take that thing off the market now. You know. Yeah. And I want to, and I, I you know. Right. What? Take the money. Yeah. I want, no, I want to, I know, I don't want the money. I want a copy of every master he's got, every master file he's got, everything he digitized. Okay. And then I'll put together my own version of that, and it'll be really good. Because I know that material, and I know where it's good and where it isn't good. I'll also strip it of a lot of the music we use, because if any of these music companies want to go after him, he's dead in the goddamn water. Yeah. Plus the fact I know he doesn't have releases on anybody who was in those shows. So that's me, folks, making trouble wherever I go. God, I've got a headache. Ah. A lot of and those shows probably aren't alive anymore. Uh, you know, quite a few of them are dead. Yeah, yeah. Seventy. But yeah, so it's quite a few of them are dead. Yeah. Um, J Jerry Damiano did Deep Throat is dead. He was on those shows. Uh, who else was? I mean, there were a lot of the actors were gone. Jamie Gillis is dead. Uh, I mean, we could go on and on. There's a lot of dead porno stars now. Yeah. I mean, but not that they died from sex or anything else. They just died because they got old, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, and those ones we can use. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's right. But I was, I was just amazed by, uh, by this thing when I watched. It. I just sit there and go and, you know, I did all this work for years to turn out really what I thought was some really interesting video. Mm -hmm. And this guy just decimates it. Just dices. slices and dices it. Yeah. Anyway, I've got a headache tonight, and I can't take an aspirin because they say do not take aspirin or any blood thinners. Is ibuprofen a blood oh. thinner? I don't know, but probably it is. I would. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm deferring to Jeff. Jeff would, would know this kind of stuff. Don't take it. But what can I take for a headache? Can you take Tylenol? No, I think you can actually. Yes, I think Tylenol. I get Tylenol. Huh? But there's there's two different kinds of Tylenol. Yeah. So I take the one that has like the multiple colors, and I think it's it's a little less strong. Yeah. 
But and I th- at the I th- same th- time, it's good for a headache. I think you can do Tylenol, if I'm not mistaken, because it's, it's not a blood I thinner. Yeah, because I take it every day. Yeah, yeah. But so, don't you take blood thinners, though, for your heart and everything? Oh, yeah. You best believe it. Huh? Uh, the only thing I'm taking now is the uh, uh, ch- uh, child's vitamin, the 81 milligram. I got one of those, too. I got uh, uh, aspirin. Baby's, baby's you, aspirin. You know what I hate about the baby aspirin? Can I... Yell and scream about this, and I love children. You know I love children. But what I hate about baby aspirin yeah. is that I know it's baby aspirin. I know that it, it is a, like, a, what, a third of the dose of normal aspirin, something like that. That's Do you have to aspirin. make them that small? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Swallow. Because you're yeah. always, if you, if you take them out of the jar, maybe you just put them into your little thing, your pill thing and all of that. There's always something that winds up getting in your crotch. These things are just getting everywhere. They're like those little radioactive seeds they're warning me about, you know? <laughs> and and it, it, they could do a third of aspirin and make it normal size, okay? But no, they're going to make it baby aspirin. going to be yeah. tiny little baby aspirins. <laughs> and they're, they're hard to manipulate. They always get yeah. away. They're always like the sock that winds up on the side of the dryer <clears throat> and you can't find it later on, you know? Yeah, I took Plavix uh, for Plavix. a year. Plavix! <laughs> it's a Jerry Lewis word. Plavix! Yeah. yeah, what? I don't think it's so bad because for me, that's not the smallest pills. Oh, that really? I have. oh even smaller? Yeah. Wow. yeah. And then one of them that's very, very small... I have to take two of them. Really? And, and they caused me to go to, and go uh, to have urine. Mm-hmm. Okay? And this is what my cardiology thought was the greatest idea. Yeah. To take that every day. Mm. And it basically means that the morning is got to be close to the bathroom. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll be uh, ne- uh, uh, next week. I don't know how much how many shows I'm going to do next week. It's going to be depend on how I'm feeling after the operation. I, it definitely won't be on Tuesday night. I'm, uh, I'm you know, but uh, uh, if I can get back to my regular schedule, I don't know when that's going to be. It's certainly if, if it isn't that week, it'll be the following week. But I um, um, uh, I'm going to take as much time as I need to kind of calm down. But I may have to, during the show, run off to the bathroom immediately. You know, if Phil knows what that's all about. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but uh, outside of that, um, outside of the, the, they tell me what could happen. They say, well, you know, you're going to be, oh, well, let me see how they put this. Hold on a second. Let me get this material. This is, this is almost fun material. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. I got to get longer earphones. Um, let's see. Post seed implant. No, I don't want that. Uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah. It says uh, uh, most patient number one. Uh, this is after the implant. Most patients do not experience discomfort immediately after the implant. I don't know what that means. I guess it means they don't experience any problems after the implant, right? Or immediately yes. after so the implant. The anesthesia wears off. Yeah. Then it says, however, you may, be exp- you may experience any of the following. <laughs> Pain or burning with urination, bruising in the perineum, frequent urination, frequent urges to urinate, getting up frequently at night, slow stream or hard urination, inability to urinate. Do you notice that um, five of these things on this list all have to do with urination? And then uh, a uh, high fever greater than 101 degrees. Now, but now, what does that mean, Jeff? Does that mean that I may not have any of those things? That's right. Because well, most mo- all of them. most patients do not experience discomfort immediately after the implant. Yeah. But you know, how about a month later? Do you start experiencing that? No, I don't think so. You know, I, hmm? I think some of the things, if they're going to happen relatively in the first week. Yeah. It yeah. might take you a while to get rid of them. Yeah. I don't think it's any worse than the uh, uh, biopsies. 
you know, when you have the biopsy and they're snipping 14 spots on your prostate, it can't be any worse than that. And also it says here, I was telling, I was telling Bubbles about this, wear a condom following the implant as directed by a radiotherapist. This will protect your partner if a seed is passed through relations. To begin uh. with, I don't think I'm going to be having sex with anybody really soon after this procedure. Not after you've turned my prostate into a pin cushion, okay? Yeah. And so then the it says, <laughs> wait a minute, then it says, any loose seeds that are found should be placed in a medicine bottle and placed in the medicine cabinet and then call a, radio, a radiation oncologist for instructions. And as I said earlier, then two guys in hazmat suits come out to your house, <laughs> right? They'll probably just tell you to swallow it again. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Purchase two two fleet enemas. Use one the night before. Here's the thing: they say that you got to you got to do a fleet enema, enema the night before, and then on the day of the procedure, uh, and. Uh, then you, you, you maybe oh there, there we are there he is he's he's at, back yeah. from lunch yes turn oh, turn your audio lunch. off for a second so here he's at lunch. okay oh. anyway um, um they they it said to me you know I have to be there like an hour and a half before the procedure okay and I have to take the enema I guess two hours before the procedure and then I said so what time do you think they're going to do the procedure they said they have you down for eight in the morning. I said, I have to get there at 6.30 in the morning for this thing? And she said, well, they'll probably change it by then, and that's just a, a place saver or whatever. But, I mean, I just, you know, I mean, come on. I, I, I don't want to have to get up at 6.30 in the morning, but maybe I'll be so out of it that, that uh, it'll be pleasant, you know? I mean, I don't, I don't get it. But anyway, and then, of course, Marjorie has to come to the hospital to pick me up, Yeah, you know. So anyway, once that's over with, I thought that would be the end of it. But then it says a month later, I have to come in for a CT scan, so they can check that the seeds are where they where the seeds are implanted properly, and uh, any other of organs that might be affecting. And it, well, what it says is um, uh, the scan uh, scan should be done at Mount Sinai. Uh, it says. Um, um, the purpose of the scan is to locate the position of your seeds and to calculate the dose received by your prostate and surrounding normal issues. The doctor does not discuss the results because this is not a diagnostic scan. So I just have to come back to make sure everything's working just right a month later. And they also then take, make, do a PSA, but then they warn me that your PSA and your testosterone, um, your PSA level may actually rise due to inflammatory reaction from the seed implant. So, and I should not be concerned with it. Don't be alarmed if this occurs. So, that's my uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. But geez, you know, well, I'm gonna have to get up and be there at six thirty in the morning for this procedure. And before I leave, I got to stick a fleet enema up my butt. Gee, God, give me give me a break. Oh, uh, you out, huh? Oh, uh, they're gonna put you out. You usually stay up to what, two or three? Yeah. So it's a couple more hours. You get there, and you know they put you out. Yeah, but I'm only I'm only out for like maybe. He he said this takes him about thirty minutes. He's really uh, fast at it. He's uh, done this eight billion overnight? times. What? Is 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 this no. done in the hospital? Are you gonna keep you overnight? No. Yeah. No, it's an outpatient yeah. thing. Nobody oh. does that anymore. Yeah, it's uh, too it, dangerous. It, yeah. It, yeah, it's too dangerous, and it's an outpatient procedure. That it's too dangerous to be in a hospital. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it is. But it's you have the worst a, place you can be. Uh, well, it's the worst place to be a cruise ship, but that's another story <laughs> altogether. Yeah, those guys in Japan on the cruise ship, two people just died. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I wondered why they were all keeping them on the cruise ship to begin with. They were quarantining them. Huh? Yeah. They yeah. quarantine them. Quar yeah. uh, quarantine. Uh, uh, yeah. Bree, turn your camera in its portrait mode, please. Yeah. Or did we lose him? No, we didn't lose him. No. There. Uh, well, now it's in the portrait mode, but it's still not doing anything. Hmm. It's not changing. Turn it the other way. Turn it the other way. It, but turn it. Uh, turn it again. There. That might do it. No, that doesn't do it either. Keep going. Keep going. Wow. Time. Keep going. Who knows? 
people sure. just, just leave it leave it that way and it'll probably work itself out i don't know oh, oh wait a minute oh, oh, oh wait a minute yeah just just uh, aim it at those aim it at those women we don't want, oh <laughs> oh oh wait a minute hold on a second oh, i'm not running for president look at her i do her anyway yeah redhead do you notice how fast she got out of there not knowing that i was there let's see here and that's uh, uh yeah uh Wow. So I, I don't, I don't I'll tell like you something. Uh, uh, Malaysian women are very attractive. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not, be, you know, I'm not uh, the kind of guy who goes crazy for, uh, uh, for, for um, Asian women, but you know, they, they are, they are something. And, and those cakes are good too. Yeah. You know, in another week, I'm going to care more about those cakes than them. All right. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, yeah, oh, well, um, yeah. So um, anyway, uh, we haven't uh, talked about last night, last uh, tonight. Um, uh, the uh, oh. hmm. yeah, you must be really proud of those guys. I'll tell you something. Uh, last night uh, they helped win Trump the election. Yeah, you know. I don't know. Elizabeth Warren's raised five million dollars. It, it doesn't matter what night. she's raised. Yeah, what I'm saying <laughs> is they. Literally, it couldn't have been better for anybody. What's happening? Why are you using the camera upside down and sideways, and it's not working? That, that was look under the dress. It's annoying. It's annoying. <laughs> yeah, just 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 keep that keep that shot, Bree. That, that's fine. You know, uh, pretend Hi, like girl. yeah. Hi. Hello, ladies. Anyway, um, where where am I? Oh, oh, you were talking oh. about uh, Elizabeth well, Warren. No, it, it, it's, just, it's just that they acted last night in such a bad way all the way around that yeah. they were handing the election to Trump. And I'll tell you how. If I were them, I wouldn't do these, these debates. And the reason is when you do a debate like you did last night, Boy, they were sitting over there at the National Republican uh, headquarters and over at the, the White House— and they were recording it and saying, well, that's going to be a good sound bite, and that's going to be a good sound bite, and that's going to be a good sound bite, because they were constantly putting each other down rather than stating their own case and laying off each other. Okay, And Elizabeth Warren was, the, I think, the most terrible and egregious one of them all. Yes, Charlie? Well, um... I seem to remember Lindsey Graham and all the other Republicans saying all kinds of awful things about Trump during the primaries, and, and it didn't seem to hurt him in the general election. But that's Trump, and it's also because the the <laughs> the, the, the he, let me let me tell you how stupid the uh, Democrats are when it comes to playing dirty. They don't know how to play dirty. Okay. Back, do you remember back in the old days when they had a little thing under Nixon called Watergate? You know when Watergate happened? Way way before the election. Yeah. And do you th and do you think the Democrats ever made a big deal out of it? No. And why didn't they? When they asked why they didn't, they said that wouldn't be right. Are you sure Watergate happened? Watergate I saw a thing on it the yes, other night. There's a show June. they're running on the history of Watergate. The Watergate June. arrest took place what? Uh maybe six months? Maybe uh, longer before the before the election. 17th. Huh? Yeah, I don't think the stuff really came out publicly uh, uh, before the election. Did it? Uh, no, you know, it no, it, no, it came out. It, no, came it out. it came out. But yeah. the Democrats didn't do anything about it. And when they were running, uh, I can't remember who was running for president at the time. He didn't uh, bring it up. He didn't bring it up and say, "What about this break in at the Watergate against the Democratic Committee?" I mean, was today. Do remember who ran? Yeah, I think it was Humphrey. That was McGovern. It was McGovern. That was when Nixon won 49 states. Oh, yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. McGovern. It was Humphrey. Yeah, that was after Watergate. That's how but bad they, the they were. And I'm sitting there watching television every night going, why aren't you talking about Watergate? Why aren't you talking about Watergate? And finally, somebody after the election said, we yeah. decided <laughs> not to because that wouldn't have been proper. Mm. What? Are you out of your mind? These hey, guys break no, into the Democratic committee and it's it's Nixon's doing and you're saying, hey, you know, 
I, I what I enjoyed most about last night was watching a, a billionaire see four hundred million dollars go up in smoke. No, it didn't. And, and and he, he's like it didn't deer, and he was a deer in the headlamps, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and you yeah. know he was probably saying, yeah. why did I spend that money on those ads, you know, or why did I actually get on this debate because he he's he has hurt himself. Uh, well, I don't think so. I think he will survive this very nicely. Uh, uh, I, don't I so. but I think that if I if, if it turned me off to anybody last night, it turned me off to Elizabeth Warren. Who I thought was playing kind of dirty, you know. Yeah. They all, or even Buttigieg, when he uh, challenged uh, Klobuchar on the uh, president of uh, Mexico's name. Yeah, I thought uh, that was a cheap shot. Yeah, you know, yeah. so she couldn't remember. Hey, you know, I couldn't remember who the mayor of New York was to my neurologist. You know, I mean, when pr pressured sometimes, you know. Yes, uh, yes, Bree. Bree? In general, uh, there was a lot of feistiness between Klobuchar and Buttigieg. Get, your, get away from the microphone uh, a little bit. Think, too close to them. Too Klobuchar close to them. That, uh, Buttigieg is taking, you know, her her vote, and so she doesn't like him. And you know, she she kind of held back. She could have hit him. She's just not very good at hitting and getting those sound bites because I think he ran statewide and lost by 20 points. And there have been a bunch of people who have come out and said he didn't run South Bend very well. She had a lot more she could hit him with, but she seemed to hold back. She she is too nervous, and mm -hmm. she's a nervous Nelly for me. I, I, I don't – I was liking her after New Hampshire, but now after that last debate, she stutters too much and sort of has a nervous energy that comes across in her voice. I don't know if anybody else picked up on that. Yeah, but I, I came out of that last night really hating Elizabeth Warren. I just thought she was, she was too – she was she was actually out to just get blood last night to seem like the winner, and you know, she, it was more important that they, in, that they all she's be. She's taking pack money. She's taking pack money now. She's she, taking pack she, money now. She, she shrills when she speaks. She she she. You, you know what it is? Shrills. On Saturday Night Live, I can't remember the woman's name. She does a uh, a uh, 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 Elizabeth. Oh, uh, uh, what's Kate her name? Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon. Yeah. Does her, uh, yeah. and all I can see when she's on stage now is Kate McKinnon, doing her. <laughs> that's all I can <laughs> see. So good, you know. I mean, that's how devastating. Well, but here's the thing. Yeah, I, Alex, uh, I don't uh, like. Get it, get I, it away from. Wait a minute. Get, get, get it away from your mouth. Yeah, that. It, that. I, I'm not a fan of Elizabeth Warren. Um, I just haven't been. But actually. It depends on how you want to judge things, but looking around at everyone on that stage, mm -hmm. who could actually do stuff, be a good organizer and, and, and president? I think Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren has a plan for everything, and she, and she seems like she could actually get things done. Yeah, but she's who can get things done. You know, there, there's there's one. There, I don't care who can do what, when, and how. There's one major question that we have to have answered. Which one of these people can beat Donald Trump? And my answer is, right now, not a single one of them. Okay. But that also isn't a good enough reason to make someone president. You know, just because they can beat Donald Trump, you want somebody that, after the flash in the pan, actually adds something to the nation. And if their whole uh, reason for being is to beat Donald Trump, then what do you get? When they do beat him, you get nothing. You you got something worse than Donald Trump because at least he's doing something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I he's agree not, with he, Phil. Phil's he, got it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> he may not be doing any, he, he may, like he, He's Bloomberg. not may not be doing anything good, but he is doing something. You know. Yeah. Bloomberg uh, said, "Hey, I'm a manager. I, you don't need somebody to manage." Yeah, you, but you, uh, look, I think. Bloomberg would have the best chance against Trump, but only because he's got the most money to throw at it. Yeah, you but know. put those two guys on a but, debate. You know, stage. do you? Th yeah. does, does anybody seriously well, think that that uh, that Bernie can beat um, uh, yeah. Trump in two states? I, I, I do. You do. I do. I, you I see, think Bernie would win forty-eight states against Trump. What? What'd you say? 
I, 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 said, I, I think Bernie would, be, would win 48 states against Trump. I think it's the other way around. Uh, the yeah. Trump yeah. trumps Bernie. Yep. No. Yeah. This I, is going to be Bernie's the new McGovern. You know, here's where everybody's making the no. big mistake about Ber uh, Bernie. Uh, uh, about Bernie. Uh, whatever percentage Bernie has, it's of a bunch of people who believe in a socialist being president, which I have nothing against. I have it against Bernie because I don't think he's genuine. Okay. I don't think he's he. I don't think. I don't. I think he's only a socialist in branding. Okay, he's not a socialist in reality. Let well, me finish. There's a difference I, between a socialist okay. and a democratic well, socialist. Well, you know, I, anybody who calls him a democratic socialist, I can tell him to go take a walk because at least have the guts to say you're a socialist rather than to temper it with democratic socialist. The I, I don't think any of them are uh, genuine. Uh, Buttigieg, none of them. I, I think they just say... Well, look, they, look, look, Trump isn't... Uh, and, and none of the Republicans who ran were either. They're politicians. They're not genuine. They don't know how to be genuine. Okay. Doing what he says he was going to do, you know. And, no, and he's not. Again, he's done almost nothing that he said he was going to do. Oh yeah, he's building the wall, 450 miles. You know. Oh yeah, yeah Mexico's sure. Mexico's paying for it too, right? Yeah. yeah. Mexico's yeah, paying for it. Yeah. He's, he's, well, got, he's got he's got a turnstile where they come in. They got to put the token in. <laughs> Well, the point is, the point is that Bernie, uh, yeah, he has 29 percent. But you got to remember, that's 29 percent. The rest of them are going to other people. Now, if that group were winnowed down to, say, three people, he might not be in the lead anymore because most of the people who are going to say they are going to vote for one of these Democrats is going to vote for somebody more in the middle than Bernie Sanders. Uh, they're not going to vote for Elizabeth Warren. They're not going to vote for Bernie Sanders. But they, uh, a Pete Buttigieg they might go for. They might go for a Bloomberg because Bloomberg is right down the middle, you know. But uh, Klobuchar did a good job. Klobuchar I, is right down the middle. These people are going to get the lion's share of the votes. And when some of them fall out of the race, whoever's left standing is going to be, uh, is going to be the receptor of those, of those people. I read today that um, Elizabeth Warren took uh, a five hundred thousand uh, dollar ad buy and canceled it for South Carolina, and a sixty thousand dollar ad buy uh, for Nevada and canceled it. Why? Uh, well, if she's canceling her ads, I think she's going to pull out of the race. Who? Uh, Elizabeth Warren. I don't think so. I I, I think she may pull that uh, because so she, uh, she just collected five million dollars overnight. She, she could have felt Phil 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 Phil. She could have felt that last night she did very well. Yeah. Okay. And that by virtue of that, that she shouldn't uh, get out. Uh, that she should get out. She why spend all this money when you got all that publicity last night? Uh, yeah. You know. Huh. You, you got to especially if you're an Elizabeth Warren. You got to spend your money wisely. You can't. Spend it like a drunken sailor, you know. And you, you uh, don't think uh, Nevada and South Carolina are uh, worth uh, no, the delegates? No, not, you, not no. She's, not, she's no. going to bank on no. Super Tuesday as well. Super Tuesday is what you got to aim everything at, and that's what I think. Uh, that's where I think uh, uh, Bloomberg is going. You know, he's going for Super Tuesday, and I think between now and then, you're going to see him. Maybe in another right. debate where in another Texas. another debate where they're not where they're going to be lowered expectations for his performance, and then they will all say, "Oh, hey, he did real well last night." Yeah, you know. So uh, don't count him out yet. It's almost almost good that he didn't do that well last night because you have lowered expectations about him. That's what you want in a president. No, uh, <laughs> look, Phil. <laughs> You know, this thing has stopped. Oh, this st thing has stopped being a race for the soul of America. This has become a wrestling match. This has become yeah. Saturday night fights. This is, you know, before the whole thing, I'm watching MSNBC, and they're like handicapping the uh, the debate. Oh, well, you know, so and so will have to come out fast and go. And, yeah, and I'm thinking, that's what they say about wrestling matches and about boxing matches. You don't say this about politics. What you say about politics is these people have to show how good they are and, and, and how good they're going to be for the country and so on and so forth. But, you know. Yeah. Pretty, uh, you know, it was, I think, 
And it, there was somebody on MSNBC today I heard out of the side of my ear who said that a lot of the uh, participants last night came out of the debate feeling that as a whole they had done badly. They had acted badly with each other. Uh, mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. and I think that's true. They can't be proud of what they did. No, that a lot of them weren't. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, and I, I, I'm sorry. I, I agree with Bloomberg, you know. Um, he says, America's leading socialist has several million dollars in three homes. In what world did that happen? You know. <laughs> he wrote a book. <laughs> he made some money. You you know? still, you're misrepresenting Bernie. What, how are you misrepresenting oh, Bernie? You guys can misrepresent him all day. It doesn't make what you're saying true. You know he's been he's been a he's been a, a hardcore supposedly, supposedly hardcore socialist all these years. Democrat. He has never claimed he's to be a hardcore socialist. Okay, his, Demo wife, his wife was the breadwinner, and she she got uh, involved in some scam with her school and bar and 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 money and uh, two hundred and something thousand dollars. There was some some scam she was involved with. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Boy, that, yeah. that that this whole picture with uh, with uh, Bree. Are you still there, Bree? I don't he, think no, so. He's not there anymore. I'm going to do a little adjusting here. Uh, no, she's uh, back. Oh, oh, there he is. He's back again. Okay. All right. All right. Because when you do that, Bree, we just get a black screen, and it's not attractive. I don't like things to look attractive. On against show. black screens. Yeah. Charlie's. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Charlie, you've got. Wow, so you don't know what you've been missing. What, what you if, don't know what you've been missing. What do you mean? Well, show us. Well, wait, what have I been? What have we been missing? We've been missing the girl. That's probably that's a, on that's the other. Excellent cake here. What? Oh. What? They've got, they've got an Oreo matcha cheesecake that is to die for. Oh really? We thought we thought you were going to turn us on to some woman or something like that, and instead it's like uh, you're turning us on to cheesecake, huh? Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Who who did I have on the bottom? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Goomba. I mean, Charlie, and then I got uh, Goomba on the bottom. But wait a minute. I had somebody else on the bottom before. Who who have I got here? Oh, oh I had you no. Know, Jeff's there, and there's Goomba, and there is. Uh, you got you got two rays on the. Uh, I know I've got two rays on here, but I'm trying to figure out why I've got two rays when I had. Oh well, here we go. Okay. Well, we only have. Four. We'll get we'll get rid of oh, one ray. ray. Two rays is two, one one ray too many. You got six total with you. Six total with me, and we didn't have six before. We had four before, right? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. So what do we meet? What do we miss there? Um, uh, this is more important than politics for a second. Uh, what did we miss yeah. there, uh, um, Bree? Uh, cheesecake. Cheesecake. Well, I want to see the cheesecake. Would you aim the phone at those girls at the other oh, table? They've, <laughs> they've got <laughs> cheesecake. Here. Cheesecake then. What kind of cheesecake? Yeah. I don't want the fat. Oh, they, have, they have a blueberry lime cheesecake. They have an Oreo matcha cheesecake. Oh, it's divine. Yeah. Really? They've got a, a French vanilla mil crepe. They've got a tiramisu mil crepe. Yeah. Just awesome. Wow. I'm going to give you a tour of the cake here in a minute. Oh, okay. We'll have it. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, for a tour of the cakes. This is the Gabnet Food Channel. And then turn the cameras around to the women so we can get a, uh, a, a shot of the pies. Uh, yeah, it's not a this. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, but I, I, you know, I just felt that, um, God, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I, I'm so worried, you know, I'm Phil, you don't argue with me on this because I know how you feel about it. But I think we're fighting for the soul of a nation, and I think it got lost last night because even the very people who we want to have to be the custodians of it, uh, seem to have fallen by the wayside. They're all battling well, each other in a very unsavory Alex, way. Alex, you've made the point before years ago that the you know the, 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 what, what you have to do in a debate is, and the way that you have to get run in your election is not what you have to do to govern. So it's, there's a total disconnect, and the system is totally flawed. I mean, it's this horse race system. This is what we have. It, you know, uh, AOC was on The View the other day, and she said the same thing. Like, they, 
uh, I, I want to create a new party called the Independence Party because it's got the largest number of percent, you know, percentage of people. But she was making this point that, um, you know, whether Bernie's a Democrat or not, and she said, well, look, the system is Republican Democrat, so you have to find your way to fit within there. You know, there's so much going on with that. Well, you know, what's interesting? What's interesting was something that that Buttigieg said last night when he was pointing at, at Bernie and at Bloomberg. He said it's amazing that the two front runners in this panel tonight, neither of which are really Democrats. Uh, yeah. You know that Bloomberg well, his is. Other point uh, was, Bloomberg one has wants to burn the party down. The other wants to buy the party out. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you something, and I don't remember uh, accurately, uh, but I think my my assumption is: Did Obama ever stoop to these uh, levels during the no. debates when no. he debated? No, Corey? never. I don't no. think so. Hillary did against him. And that's probably the re the way the picture that they should assume. Uh, they mm. they. Should Look to that as an example of how to conduct themselves. Well, I mean, for whatever you want to say about Obama, I think he was well, a he's a per- per- about Obama. I thought he pretty you know, cl- pretty classy guy, well, pretty classy yeah. guy. You know, well, I if if I was up against a bunch of uh, dregs like these people, I would I would go from a classy uh, uh, step above uh, thing. That's how they're going to stand out. The the person that takes the Obama uh, track is the one that's going to stand out. I think it's too late for any of them because they've all tainted themselves with this with this with this style, you know. They've become they okay, I think Trump is dirty. Just hear me out, Phil. Trump is dirty. He plays dirty, he acts dirty, he tweets dirty. He's he's a, he's a dirty politician. He plays rough and tumble, okay? Uh we don't like that. We find that objectionable. And yet we will then allow our own Democrats to act that way? That's right. That's wrong. We should act in the way that we want people, uh, we want po- our politicians to act. Well, that's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. And, so and we're not doing that, you no. know? Uh, you know, the, the, the first one that, you know, either does a mea copa and says, you know, I don't, I'm not proud of uh, the way I was on that uh, debate stage. And this is the way I am going to uh, go f- uh, forward uh, mm-hmm. with uh, debates. And uh, I, think the per- uh, I don't think it's Bernie. Uh, I don't think Bernie did anything uh, that uh, last night to cause him to be uh, considered you know, an idiot. Like uh, the rest uh, of them. Charlie, I think that what you've got in Bernie and it, you're kind of going along with is his, no, pass- no, is, no. is his passive aggressiveness in which he goes, oh, no, I wouldn't do that sort of thing. But he's kind of like, I don't know, he's like the, the King and Beckett who says to a bunch of people, that man is just driving me nuts. I wish something would happen to him. And then they, Bernie, somebody else, went, let that. me finish. Let me finish. No, that's not what I'm, what I, he, he, hear, me, hear me out, Charlie, that he, he then he is giving kind of permission to his uh, his underlings to go out and kill Beckett. All right, um, uh, it's the same thing with 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 Bernie. He's going. Oh, I don't want them doing that. I, I please don't do that in my name. But yeah, he does pro- nothing to really it, stop it. And the yeah. fact is, what can he, he do? You can't control. People. Yes, you can. He can't yes, do you one can. One thing to control what I do. You There's yes, you can. Bernie Sanders because can do people are doing what I do. People are doing what they're doing because they feel they have Bernie's blessing. No, now, they don't. Well, he engenders. He, he engenders. He, Bernie's he, blessing. He, he, Charlie, he, he he engenders that blessing. Okay. No. no. You know, uh, he engenders the. Trump is the one that's done that for to smack the guy upside the head. I'll pay your legal bills. That's Trump. That's not Bernie. Bernie has never said that. He's never said that he would take care of anybody that, that hurt somebody for him. Bernie's Bernie supporters are thugs. They're, no, they're, they're, they're not. I, 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 Those are Russian I, fucking I, trolls. I, Anybody can get on the internet. I can get on the internet now and say I'm a Trump supporter and then make a threat against Elizabeth Warren. I see. And say, oh, those Trump supporters are so terrible. Charlie, I see these people throwing stuff through windows, lighting dumpsters on fire. And you don't know. There's no proof that those are Bernie supporters. Those are Bernie supporters. 
There's no true way to go. Interview everyone and look George at George Soros. Give up up I, I think Bree wants to say something. Bree? Uh, uh, Bree is. No, uh, no, it's okay. There he is. Uh, Sorry. Can okay. you still hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can you guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you, uh, my if, phone is going batty. I know. I gotta get a new phone. When you turn that phone, when you turn that phone to your face, in other words, you turn. Oh, there we go. Now we got we got <laughs> the wide screen finally. Wait a minute. Who's that woman? Who's that woman? You just passed by a woman. That looks like. Come on. I only have a few days left to masturbate. Who was that woman? Uh, give me. <laughs> She's very pretty. Yeah. Oh, oh, she was. Yeah, very pretty. Oh, the redhead again. But I like you know, if I were younger, I think that's where I'd move. You know. Oh, what do you think, Ray? What, what do you think about what we've been talking about here? You know, he's looking at me, the huh? <laughs> Who me? Yeah, you. I, I I don't think that uh, Bernie supporters are violent. Oh. I mean, I'm a Bernie supporter. I know a ton of Bernie supporters who aren't violent. Where are you seeing these violent Bernie supporters? No, no, it's it's not violent. It's it's well, some of Bill the just said it's, it, I, I, it's some of the it's some of the trolling they're doing and stuff like that. You know, no, uh, well, I, no, I, I didn't say that. They're causing violence. They, they shout down conservatives that uh, want to speak in public. You know, whether well, you it's said they were throwing bricks and things like that. Yes, they were in Berkeley uh, when uh, Yiannopoulos was going to speak at Berkeley. They broke the windows. They set the dump. Yeah, it's it, it, not Bernie people. That's not, no, that that's, that, that's not Bernie people, people you're not talking not about. I, it's not Bernie supporters. Bernie hey, Phil, no, it's not. Phil, I went to Cal. I, I went to Cal, and they often report 1914. that. Not, you went to okay. Cal. Will you listen to him, Phil? What What is okay. it, Ray? They often blame people uh, that aren't actually who they say they are. They're somebody else. They're not Bernie supporters. And the, and the Belaclavas and, uh, you know. That doesn't mean that they're Bernie supporters. No, I, I, they, I, I've never heard anybody say that the people who were shouting down certain speakers at Cal were Bernie supporters. Well, well I've heard Fox TV heard say it. it. I heard it on Fox and I've heard, yeah. I've heard it on, uh, I've heard it on the, on the bullshit channels. Yeah. But they have no you proof heard. of that. And, and it's, and it's true. I mean, no, they, it's not. They're, they're news investigators. They check this stuff out. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. Oh, oh. Bullshit. Yeah. But uh, you, you should you should see some of these people and and uh, you know they're uh, got to be kidding don't me. Like Bernie because you of have his the nerve to say that with what Trump has done. You have the nerve. Really gonna be wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second, Charlie. Go ahead. So we like Bernie because he cares about other people. He cares about the the thirty million people that don't have health care. He cares about the college students that are buried in in, in, in debt over the student loans. We're not going to be violent. We care about people. That's why we like Bernie. Elected. The only thing he cares about is getting elected, and he's offering you a bunch of free sh stuff that he's never... Oh, bullshit. Been. Like, Trump doesn't... Never. Trump listen, listen, free it's stuff. not free. He's sitting there... Let me, let, me, let me ask you something, Charlie. If he would lie about the okay, Russians. Okay, uh, Jeff. Okay. A lot of my son, uh, two of my nephews are all guys in, uh, you know, 30s and 40s. They all like Bernie. I can't see why. Well, they feel like it's the advantage for them. I can see why. I, you see, I'm, I'm, uh, my opinion is based on 80 years of becoming a cynic. Okay, there's they they aren't old enough to have gotten that cynical yet. Okay, so they're open to that kind of idea. Uh, I don't believe, for instance, I know this for a fact. Okay, Bernie can promise all he wants to. If he doesn't get himself a Democratic uh, Senate, none of that's in. He's not going to be able to do any of that. That's right. Not going to get any of it done. So to, to even make the promise, he's got to make the promise by saying, "Here's how I think America should be." And if I get president and I can be, a, I can have the right uh, uh, Senate, you know, Congress and so on to get these things passed. Here's what I'd like to do, but don't make these promises about. It. Here's what. I, here's a, here's the statement I hate every politician makes. Well, if I'm elected on day one, blah blah blah. I'm going to close Guantanamo. Yeah, yeah. On day on day two, I'm yeah. you know I'm going to create the heaven well, and the Trump earth. Trump made a yeah. lot of those statements, if you remember, Phil. He made very a lot of them. Yeah, I guess you maybe forgot that. 
<laughs> it was Obama that said he was going to close on uh, Guantanamo on day one. No, you're changing the subject. And he he tried. made promises about he other things, and you know he did. It. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, oh, fact of the, the fact of the matter is that... Mr. Fuck it in if they wouldn't let him do it. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, the point is, the point I'm making is, is that, that he can make all these promises about here's the kind of medical care I'd like. Um, Americans, yeah. Americans are not ready for single payer. They, they should be. They're stupid if they don't. But they, I don't think they're ready for it. I, they, they, get, they have this concept what, what, of, oh. they have the, this concept, and I, I refer everybody, everybody should refer people to last week's John Oliver show if they meet anybody who is against single-payer health care because he shows you why every argument against it is wrong. Uh, the whole idea about, yep. I want to be able to choose my doctor. His answer to that? You can't choose your own doctor anyway. You have to choose the one the insurance company chooses for you. Otherwise, they're not going to be in network. Okay? Then why are so, you against Bernie, Bernie Alex? Alex? No, I'm not. I, 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 I'm against Bernie because I just, I don't, I don't, I don't oh. think he's, he's genuine. Okay? <clears throat> I, he just doesn't ring true with me. There's something. Not, there's so something he's about. He's been talking about this for thirty years. I, I don't care. He's been talking about it for a hundred years, which is probably closer to how long he's been talking about he's it. A one-note song. He, he's been talking about the same thing for thirty years. He's the huge. Uh, he, he's that, a fifteen-note song. He's got fifteen different things he's been talking about for forty years. Yeah. Go listen to other interviews other than the debates. He talks about hey, everything. I, I listened to some of his early uh, tapes last night. I tried to send it to everybody, but it didn't send. Uh, these uh, he was talking about immigration. He was talking about uh, also th that you cannot pay off. Uh, health care for all. It's too expensive. It'll bankrupt the country. That's what he said. I did send it to everybody, but nobody nobody could open it. Uh, it it's not going to bankrupt the, the country. Uh, Bernie, the, the, the fact, the, but, the, but the point is, I, Phil, is Phil, Phil I want, I'd like you to watch that John Oliver show from last week and then come back and tell me that he doesn't make a good case that all these I, arguments, hold on a second, all mm -hmm. these arguments against single payer are wrong. You know, this whole idea about, I want, I want to be able to choose my own doctor. Well, when you're single payer, you get to choose your own doctor, but you don't get to choose them now. Because if I want to go get a doctor right now, I have to go get a doctor that's in network. If, if I don't get a doctor that's in network, I'm going to have to take one I may not want, but he's in network. Okay? okay. The only, that's this one is the only Western example. country that doesn't have it. This is the Bernie <laughs> yeah. thing. Uh, you know, uh, maybe you can hear. No, I don't want to hear anything through your phone, Phil. Come on, that's boring. No, no, no. So, All right. You know, put it up on your Facebook page or whatever. I, I can't. For can some hear. reason, it won't uh, open if I put it on anything. Yeah. Well. Anyway, the point I'm making is, is that that uh, um, uh, John Oliver took all these various reasons people give why they don't like single-payer health care and, and shows where they're, they're literally ridiculous in feeling that, that they're going to be better off if they had single-payer, okay? Yeah. But the only thing you're not better off with single-payer is the years that it takes to get the procedures. No, that's and, absolutely... That's he does, away, he does, away, with, that, he does away with that argument, Phil. Phil, Phil, watch, watch. Do me a favor. Watch John Oliver. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, watch John Oliver. Watch John Oliver and then come back to me and tell me what you think, okay? Because he takes that... He brings that very thing up, and he said the fact of the matter is that people in, in a lot of places... Like uh, Canada will tell you that their um, uh, their health care is is terrific, you know, and that it, you know they didn't have to wait for a year to get a procedure or anything like that. That that's a big lie. That's a big lie that's being perpetrated. At your age, go watch. Well, I, hey, Phil, how fast? I didn't have to wait in line, and basically, I have socialized medicine. I have Medicare. You paid yeah. for that. I no. you paid for that. N no, I have Medicare because I'm over sixty-five. Right. And and for the fifty years that you worked prior to that, you paid for it. Well, but the point of in fact is is that everybody had Medicare for all. They wouldn't be waiting for a year to get a procedure. No. You know that's one of the big lies. Just 
Do me a favor. What, don't You can't say I, another thing about health care until you go watch John Oliver's show from last week. You had that many Phil, people. are you going to watch John Oliver's show from last yes, week? Yes, I will. But the, the thing is, if you have... Then, then, then come back to me and we will argue it. Okay. okay. I'm just, I have one. They live longer. One point. They have longer. They do live longer. Than U.S. They, citizens. I don't care how long they live. I find it hard to watch John Oliver. Look, the thing is, if you just have a pool, I find it hard to watch this. That are <laughs> above, oh, you can't say something here. Uh, if no, you, you can't. He just made had a very it's funny John line. Oliver. That are sixty-five and above. Oh, here we go. You don't yeah, have to yeah, wait yeah. as long as if you have two hundred or three hundred and thirty million people mm -hmm. on on yeah. the insurance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and yeah. there then you're gonna have lines. Phil, you just Phil, you are, Phil, the way Phil. Oh, it, hey, you know, Phil, quit being such a goddamn hypocrite because because, because you were Only part Democrats. you were part of the biggest uh, 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 socialized medicine. Uh, plan in America, and the first one that was socialized medicine, and that's Kaiser. You and you pay, and, and you, you you have Kaiser, and Kaiser is socialized medicine. It's socialized medicine, but I was paying 13, over thirteen hundred dollars a month before I got on Medicare. Yeah, and now that you're on Medicare, how much are you paying? Uh, a couple hundred dollars. I'm paying. No, the, you're, pay paying, uh, no you're, you're paying. No, you're paying You're paying one hundred and forty. You're paying $148, uh, for $148 and I pay, a month. And if, and if you're getting Social Security, that comes out of your Social Security. Well, I'm not getting Social Security. Well, when you do, it'll come out of your Social Security. Yeah, yes, know. yes, Bree. Um, one of the things that, uh, you know, I guess, you know, the rich people of the, of the U.S. don't understand, Bernie actually is helping them in a way. And, and the reason why is the, the way that we're currently going is not – there are a lot of people who are hurting and basically what you want to do if you're rich you want to give people you want to make sure that there people have just enough so that they don't complain you mm -hmm. know but the way that it's going we're gonna have to increase our law enforcement we're gonna have to increase our jails we're gonna have to increase it's just not sustainable what Bernie is talking about is giving a little bit back to the you know I don't know if you saw this there was a guy in a CBS reporter who was in a mall and he had six plates mm-hmm and he said, how many, he said, this is the 1%, this is, you know, and he, he mapped it out. And the poorest of the poor didn't even get crumbs. In fact, they owed money for the pie. So like the the 1% had like eight pieces of the pie and there was one piece for the extremely wealthy. There was a half of a piece for middle class. There was crumbs for just below and there was nothing for the poor. And Bernie is saying like, let's move a little bit of that pie in that direction. He's not saying take the whole pie. Hmm. You know, it's not kind of thing is, is that the way we're going is not sustainable. And from on that perspective, I kind of agree with them. Yeah. Well, I, I just, uh, you know, I just think that there are a lot of reasons that people give why, why a single payer uh, won't work. And the fact of the matter is that it absolutely will work. And um, we, the thing is, is that I don't know about you, but the idea of paying an insurance company, the kind of horrible premiums that they're charging now. Um, that was all possible the day the Reagan administration, I believe, made it so that yep. they couldn't, uh, so that they could, uh, uh, they, uh, prior to Reagan, if you were a insurance company, you had to be a nonprofit. That's all you could be, it was nonprofit. And now, uh, after Reagan, you could be for profit. And they've gotten greedier and greedier and greedier. And I don't know about you, but when I was at Sirius, Sirius XM had a, had a medical plan for me, and it was great. I participated in it. And for my wife and I, it cost us like $300 a month on our sh for our share. You know? And uh, uh, th that's, that's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And that's why a national health care plan would bring the cost down in many ways. It also, you would pay more taxes for it, but you wouldn't be pay it wouldn't be the equivalent of what you're paying in premiums for insurance now. Yeah. Yes, Ray. I pay a thousand dollars a month, and it's so much. I cheaper. pay a thousand dollar. I pay a thousand dollars a month just for me, mm -hmm. and I pay a thousand dollars a month for the other three people in my family. I pay two thousand dollars a month in insurance for insurance. Insurance premiums. Mm -hmm. How much money do you make? Wow. Uh, not much. Okay, your wife works. So we have. To, she works, and then we have to sell. We have to sell stock every quarter to be able to live. 
you, you know, you, I mean, it's, you might it, like the health care in Malaysia. Well, how's, how's the health care done in Malaysia? Oh, it's great. I mean, Singapore as well. When I, you know, I live there. You know, I don't have to fear going to a doctor or going to a consultant because I know that I'm not going to get gouged, you know, on the prices. Uh, and I can get second opinions and I can go in and I get a full slate of all the, you know, prescriptions I need. Yeah. And I know I'm never going to be out more yeah. than $15. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and people should feel that way, you know. I got to tell you, even though I've got Medicare and I've got uh, my uh, SAG after uh, um, health plan as a secondary, I'm still getting killed by co-pays, you know. I mean, it's it's twenty five dollars here, it's twenty five dollars there. It's you know, I imagine I'm going to have the four thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars worth of procedures here, and my copay will be maybe a hundred dollars or something. You know, but I mean, I just my taxes are higher here. Still, I shouldn't have to do that. You know, you 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 deserve more, and yeah, so your taxes go up, but it's going to not go up go up more than you're paying for for insurance right now for your entire family. Ray could, you know, certainly he would he wouldn't be paying two thousand dollars a month more in taxes. That's for damn sure. You know. So. You know, we, we pay twice what the people in Canada pay. Per person, we pay twice for health care than what people in Canada pay. Well, that's why a lot of people get on a bus and go up to Canada and buy their drugs up there. Yeah. You know? I buy them in Canada. They're 10 times more here. I buy them in Canada, the medicine I have to take. I, I heard that there was a place called the Marine Pharmacy or something that uh, is good to use. So, uh, something Marine Pharmacy in Canada. Well, I mean, there, well, there are a lot of legitimate there, ones. There are a lot of pharmacies in Canada, and uh, some of them will take you for your money, and the others won't. won't. Uh, uh, but it, it, medicine is incredibly cheaper in Canada, and it's not that it's more expensive for them, to, less expensive for them to make in Canada. It's that they, the Canadian government, will not let them charge that much for drugs in Canada. Didn't Trump just sign a thing that said that the drug companies have to charge what they do in Canada? No. Yeah. No. He just uh, he just uh, had no. What, no. What, is what is that thing, Charlie? That uh, he always does an executive uh, order that oh, uh, that executive one. order. That, well, if he did, he did it today. I certainly have. Oh, he's about allowing it. them to okay. import cheaper drugs from Canada. He's going to allow that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's what it was. But he's not saying that he, they can they have to charge. But they, there should be a law to that effect. If you're selling it to Canada for that price, you should look around the world. Say, what's the lowest price any country is paying for that particular drug? You got to charge. That's all you can charge here in America. Plain and simple. Nothing wrong that's with that. That's what they that. do in Canada, actually. They'll go out and buy it from another country. I get that message all the time from my pharmacy in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean... But didn't John Oliver point out that there's some insurance companies that are actually paying their their their, uh, their, peop their, their patients to, to fly yes. to San Diego and then yeah. across the border uh, to you buy have, medicine? You have to go back and watch cheaper. that show to hear the story, but it, it had, you were absolutely right, it had to do with one insurance company, I think in Montana or someplace like that, that was actually paying their customers to go somewhere else to buy their drugs and they pay for the plane flight plus give them $500. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, still cheaper than buying the drugs here in the U.S. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it, 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 it's terrible what happens. And as you get older, you need these, as Jeff knows and as I know, you need these drugs yeah, more and too. more. I'm very fortunate in that... My SAG after uses Express Scripts, and I am now getting where I used to pay $195 a month for all my prescriptions. I'm now paying $135 every three months for my prescriptions. That's pretty good. You know, I think it may even be less than 135, maybe more like 125. So, you know, there are, there need to be better plans out there. It needs to be better medicine. And there needs to be a lot more time for us to do the show. But unfortunately, we Elizabeth run out of Warren time. Elizabeth has a plan for that. She has a plan for that, right. <laughs> and I'm sure she will, in a very shrill manner, yes, tell yeah. it to you. 
you know. Uh, but Bloomberg is edited. Listen, I, you know, they're all, they're all schmucks. What can I say? I think I can say that without being losing my, uh, my. Trump wins. My, my, you lost it an hour ago. I, when I play Buzzy Linhart, I Trump lost my wins. monetization. Trump wins. Anyway, hey, listen, that's it for tonight. Uh, uh, it's been really good having you here. Good bunch. Charlie's been uh, spitting, spitting blood tonight. Uh, <laughs> And uh, uh, Jeff, <laughs> good talking to you. And of course, uh, you know, the one great thing about Bree, I mean, we like Bree, but the good thing about him is that he shows us a lot of great Malaysian women, you know, um, but he hasn't got the guts to really point the thing at their faces. But it, it, you do a good enough job of it. Uh, and, and of course, Ray, we always like talking to you. And, uh, and uh, Phil, glad you're not beating up on old people tonight. Anyway, I want you all to give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye back to you, okay? There we go. There they go. There's our citizen panel. Aren't they a good citizen panel? They were a terrific citizen panel. There'll be another one coming up next when, if you listen to uh, uh, the um, intersection with Jack Bishop, which is next over most of this same little, little internet uh, broadcast organization. Uh, you just, uh, you know, have a nice night, everybody. I'll see you again tomorrow night uh, at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night.